Welcome everyone. I'm in my capstone slide. I'll, I'll be doing a collection of prayers um, that I've translated from Tibetan these last couple of years, um, put to the pipe organ. I'll be using um, the traditional melodies from my monastery, Kukumbhata Lung, founded by uh, His Venerable Pardutukur uh, Rinpoche. And um, so these are the general opening and closing prayers that are done before the teaching or uh, meditation practice usually. So I've been working with them a while in Tibetan, and so to put them into English and to translate them to organ was a very enjoyable task for me. <coughs> uh, I'll be meeting with Vaik uh, Lauren here, uh, our cantor, and you're all welcome to sing uh, the prayers. They'll be played in very standard way, so I'll play the, the uh, melody first on the organ, alone, and then I'll add in one voice, and then usually another voice, and then usually a third or fourth voice, depending on the song. And so it's kind of like a four-part harmony. Um, I've worked a little bit by putting, uh, putting these to a choir, a four-part choir, and it works very well too. But uh, for now, we'll just do a single uh, melody voice that you go often and sing, and will be played throughout, and it's pretty easy to catch on. But these are all in um, perfect meter. so. Iambic pentameter is uh, 10 syllables with accents on 2, 4, 6, and 8. And so all these will uh, be in that meter. And the pickup to the downbeat, you know, the beginning, will be always the first syllable. So for example, our first one, Lord Voltaire, the Great Telo Naro, and Marco Villa Shaking or Gumbo. All wise of the Jamison Karmapa for major, 8 minor, and the key verbs. So they all kind of go like that. And so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give some brief translation notes um, on these prayers, uh, each in between each one, just to kind of make clear what's happening. Because the language, due to the nature of Tibetan being extremely terse and English usually pretty wordy, especially in the translations, this uh, kind of work is deemed uh, impossible by my professor and many other people. So I'll have to do a little explanation into the meaning um, that I came, came to to translate these as. So I'll start that now. And then we'll do a prayer. And then, yeah, that's it. So this first is uh, the supplication to the Mahamudra of lineage. Uh, so I translate that as ultra, ultra seal lineage prayer. Mahamudra means uh, the great seal or the great symbol. And it's a seal that marks all existence. So it's pretty. Um, so the first, we pay homage to the lineage holders. So Lord Bolpera the Great is the name for Vajra Dharma, the, the holder of the Vajra. Lord Bolpera is how I'll be translating Vajra throughout these prayers. And um, it's an interesting translation. It's very literal from the Tibetan Dorje. Um, but what a Vajra is, is um, two things, really. A Vajra can either be the lightning bolt known to be held by Indra. And um, it, we use this kind of uh, mythological symbolism because the Vajrayana path, which are Tom Richard Trungpa was um, a lineage holder in, is uh, the third vehicle, or yana, in, Tibet, in Buddhism. And it's known as Vajrayana because uh, just as when Indra releases his thunderbolt, there is nothing in the three worlds that can stop it, even so with the Vajrayana path. Once one embarks on it and uses its skillful means, there is no hindrance to perfect awakening. So Lord Volt Bearer the Great, the Bearer of the Lord Volt the Great, Telo Tilopa Naro, Naropa. Naropa is part of the Kaju lineage, and so we pay homage to my school's, well, my school's named after Naropa. We have Marpa, Milarepa, Mila, Shaping Lord Gampo, that's Gampopa. These are all lineage holders. All wise and three times wisdom, Karmapa. Karmapa is another very um, renowned lineage holder. We're currently in the 17th incarnation of him. Uh, four major, eight minor lineage keepers, that's in the Tibetan tradition, there's four major and eight minor lineages, and then the keepers of those. Three tiger grove, that's three grand dragon more, those are the three, three out of the, you know, four and the eight, and grand dragon more, who won the deep path, bearing ultra seed. So they embarked on a spiritual course, a spiritual journey, uh, and they bear the ultra seal, this seal that, that marks this lineage. The peerless patronage, clear command line. I'll be using patronage and patron a lot 
um, it's kind of a, it, we're not talking about library book, um, borrower, <laughs> borrowers, uh, but patronage as in kind of like um, a, like a father figure, a protector or a um, kind of guardian. They help and they protect and they, you know, aid. So patronage or patron will be used a lot and it's referring to protector, the archaic form of the, the word. Clear command line, it's the, the lineage again. Um, prayers be thine. Prayers is always two syllables in this, uh, just so you know. Uh, the command line masters, keep the lineage, thy legend kindly treat. So this is going to be throughout, kindly treat, kindly treat, kindly treat. This is just saying, um, whatever I said before, treat me like as if the Dharma is medicine and you are a skillful doctor, lineage holders. Please treat me with this, this um, nectar, this elixir of Dharma and allow these things to take birth in my own um, mind, my own mind stream. And then we have, after that, that's the entire uh, beginning supplication, and we have four tenets. So the first one begins, Discuss the basic exercise advised, devoid of hankerings for food before. Binds to this life, severs the ascetic, resistance for esteem, gain kindly treat. So this is the first one. Uh, the basic exercise uh, is discussed. It, it is this kind of revulsion towards our habitual patterns. It's really deciding, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change. I'm going to shape up. Um, and so we have the void of hankerings for food with all. So no, no longer interested in material gain and um, ma material things. Uh, binds to this life, severs the ascetic. I'll be using ascetic, and I know that's a scary word for us Westerners. But uh, again, in the archaic form, uh, exercise, uh, ascetic comes from the word to exercise. So we have gom, which means um, exercise. And here we have gom chen, which is a, usually translated sometimes as ascetic. Uh, there's a funny story about Gongchen. In Tibet, there's this little creature, a little marmot kind of figure, and he hibernates, a little thing, hibernates all winter long, and they, they call him Gongchen, like an ascetic that meditates, you know, all winter long. <laughs> all right, so that's the first time it's discussed, and we say, listlessness for esteem, gain kindly tree. So let us not care for esteem or gain. Please let us that take place in us. Revere the utmost exercise. Advise, master who opens the trova lessons, is whom constantly praise the ascetic. Unshaped, revered, developed, kindly tree. So this is talking about devotion or reverence to one's master, who is very important in this tradition. And then we have, gone stir the real scene exercise advised. Fresh nature understood in what appears. Not shaping it there as the ascetic. To exercise free of thoughts, kindly treat. Gone stir is the essential instruction. It's the real scene. It's really what's important. Um, it's the main practice, really. A gone stir just means no longer stirred, undistracted, clear. Whatever happens, thoughts that arise, whatever appears is recognized for only its fresh nature, its presence. And so the ascetic does not shape these things and works through whatever happens, um, kind of without any trouble. Judgments in nature shaping shape that buys are not at all appear nor were at all not stopped appear and play to the ascetics fin past can part understood kindly treat. Uh, this is referring to thoughts. So what do we do when thoughts come up? In Naropa we talk lots about this. Uh, in, in the tradition it's the same. They don't we don't stop them, we don't try to crush them, but we let them appear and they appear in play. Just a wonderful display. Spin pass or samsara and nirvana. These can't part, these are inseparable, indivisible. And so to understand this, we ask for that kind of um, understanding. And then finally, our last verse in this is, in all my verse, let the pure master be, never apart, enjoying and shaving. From perfection and lore of ground and path, let lordful fairers rank be swiftly had. And so this just goes up, making aspiration that we always be close to our masters and that we enjoy shaping, which is uh, my translation for Dharma, I'll talk about a little later. Um, and eventually attain the same rank as Lord Volbert the Great, whom we mentioned in the beginning. So this, uh, this is the prayer that takes the most explanation. I, I won't bore you so much in the next ones. But I hope you enjoy the Ultra Seal Village Prayer. And, uh, all right.